Yeah, thanks everyone um, for joining. Um, my talk is about exploiting race conditions in web applications, and I am very excited because it's the first time for me being in Singapore, and I feel honored that my talk got accepted. Uh, before we start with the uh, start with the talk, I want to say a few words about me. So I'm uh, a senior application security specialist at Sage. So basically, what I do is I support our software development teams in securing the software development lifecycle by integrating tools, securing pipelines, a general DevSecOps approach, and shifting security left. So I have a background in penetration testing, and on the side, I'm lecturing secure coding on the DHBW University in Germany. Um, I have a master degree in IT security management, and what I'm going to present to you today, uh, this talk is... Uh, a lot of, of my research I did as my master dissertation, and I have a couple of uh, certifications. Um, I love open source projects. I have my own ones. I contribute to open source uh, projects, especially in AppSec, for example, to over SAP. And all, everything you will find today in the slides and uh, the, the tool I've developed is everything published on my GitHub repository, so all open source. Uh, now the agenda today, so we start with a short theory about what are race conditions at all. Then we have a vulnerable web application, so this was implemented to show real vulnerabilities, real race condition vulnerabilities. Uh, they are all inspired by real bug bounty reports, by write-ups. Uh, so yeah, we needed that vulnerable web application just to demonstrate also the attack tool, which will be the next step. Uh, so I've developed a new attack tool to exploit race condition uh, vulnerabilities. Um, then I will show you this tool in a live demo, and we wrap this up with a conclusion. So let's go to the theory. What are race condition? So when you Google race condition, on, uh, you will find this OWASP definition, uh, and I, I only want to focus on the very last sentences of this definition. Uh, it says, race conditions by their nature, they are very difficult to test for. And I totally agree. And that's also the impression I got up uh, with speaking some of you folks uh, uh, before this uh, talk. So, um, yeah, it, it's, when testing for race conditions, it's all about timing. So it's very difficult to reproduce and, and stuff like that. And also MITRE, they mention on their website also, uh, it's a research gap. So I think there's little known about race conditions and there's still much to learn about them, uh, how we improve our exploitation and our tool set to, to find them or protect us from race condition vulnerabilities. And also, um, for example, I think it's uh, often overlooked by penetration tests because, for example, it's currently not mentioned in the OVAS testing guide. So, um, yeah, it's it was mentioned in the OVAS testing guide in previous version, but it's not currently. But again, what are race conditions? I didn't explain it yet. So race conditions, they, they are when you have a shared resource. This could be a file on a file system. This can be data on database. And you have multiple processes accessing or working with this shared data with this in the database. And a race condition occurs when you have overlapping processes. Uh, like uh, multiple processing, working with the shared data, and then you get un unintended results. That's a race condition. Unintended results by multiple uh, parallel processes working on the sh same shared data. So, knock knock, who's there? <laughs> race condition. So that's a common joke about race conditions. So uh, this is one example how one could look like. Like you have one process doing the knock knock and the who is there, and then you have another process jumping in in between this and uh, doing the race condition. Like there, there is a time delay somewhere. But when does this become a sec security issue? Why do we need to care? So there are uh, many examples, and I will have a, a few of them uh, for you. So um, it's often like, for, for example, when you uh, would be um, an anti-brute forcing me mechanism where you have, for example, a rate limit. So if you can bypass that rate limit, th then it becomes a security issue. Or also other scenarios we've seen and also later implemented in the um, demo application is uh, you can, like when you have a banking account and you withdraw money, 
and you can overspend your banking account. So there is a check which prevents you from overspending. By the, but the, by exploiting the race condition vulnerability, you are able to overspend your account and, and things like that. Um, for example, multiple voting. Uh, you know Twitter. You have you can like uh, press like on a tweet there, and it's only allowed to to vote once per account. Yeah, but. Actually, this is a real vulnerability report. Uh, Twitter was vulnerable to this race condition. That's why I'm mentioning it. So if you are able to submit multiple votes so you can temper this, uh, that's, uh, that's also then a security issue. And even uh, cross-site reaches forgery, they are designed to be uh, used only once. What if you can uh, reuse them multiple times um, by exploiting a race condition? So there are plenty of <laughs> uh, examples. Um, I brought two very big examples with me here in, in, in slides because uh, they had a really big bug bounty payout. Uh, one was here from, from last year, uh, AWS uh, Cognito. This was able to, someone, a researcher was able to bypass uh, the password reset code, the, the rate limiting on this one. So they had a rate limit thing for, um, that you are only allowed to submit 20 times uh, uh, a six-digit six code. And by and because of the race condition vulnerability, the researcher was able to submit more than 1,000 uh, tries of that uh, six-digit six code. And, and also the other example in AWS and uh, Microsoft um, in, in their uh, lo uh, password reset and the login function, it was... Um, the same issue, and that this led to account takeover, which I think does have a very high or critical impact, and that's why the bug bounty payout was, was that high. So for Instagram, it was $30,000, and for Microsoft, it was $50,000 for that researcher. And I just wanted to show you that example that race conditions can have a really high impact. Uh, yeah. So um, I also brought a PHP example with me, uh, a short code snippet. And my question is, can you spot a race condition? So for PHP, it's, uh, uh, by nature, it's a multi-processing uh, multi uh, language. And um, yeah, when you, when you see that code here, I, I brought you, it's only the seven line of codes, but there's a race condition in it. And uh, very similar examples, if you go to the official PHP docs and search for functions for the MySQL functions over there, you will find these examples. This is, that's what you see in Stack Overflow. That's a real code snippet, but they are vulnerable to race conditions. And you, you, what, what develop, developer do? They look something up in Stack Overflow, they copy the code, and uh, yeah. It, so um, what does this code does here is, um, it's like a withdrawal function. Like I mentioned, you have uh, the table users, you, you have the credit, and then uh, in, on line four, you check if there's still a, enough amount to, to withdraw on, on your credit, and then uh, you, you withdraw the amount of money from your credit, and then you in line six, you update the, the user's tables again with the new uh, credit. So a withdrawal fun function like your banking account. And uh, yeah, there, there's a race window between line two and six. So there are, uh, it's a very small uh, time window, um, which, um, yeah, another process could um, hit in. And then, um, yeah, there's a small delay, in, in milli only in milliseconds. But um, if someone is sending multiple requests and at this endpoint, and he's catching the right moment, the right time, uh, only milliseconds of time, then there's, he could work on a uh, yeah, not recent version of the credit table here. And um, I, I've only uh, added three suggestions how you can, can fix this solution, but I could have made a whole presentation only about uh, preventing race conditions in different coding languages. So that's only a few ideas. So you could add a locking before, locking before line two and after line six just that no one else can work on this uh, shared resource at the same time. This is the most obvious one. Um, I, I, I like solution two because this is like a fail-safe solution. Uh, you can add additional condition to the update uh, statement. So where you compare, add additional condition that you compare is the credit, did it temper in the meantime? 
uh, was it changed? So then you could just say, okay, fail, uh, um, it, so it got changed to, um, um, to create in the meantime, maybe by another process. And that's how you could also detect the race condition uh, vulnerability because you have this fail uh, option. Then you can say, okay, um, I, I add a sensor, I add a detection point in my uh, uh, application, and then I make an alert that, and, and notify me that uh, there was a race condition somewhere in my code. That would be a nice idea. And also, last option, <laughs> but not least, is uh, you could change the whole code um, to uh, select for update statement if it's possible. I think in that case it would be possible to write everything into one SQL statement, all, all the, uh, everything, because if you uh, have everything in one SQL statement, there won't, won't be any time delay, <laughs> so you don't have a race window. Um, of course, if you have multiple uh, SQL statements uh, next to each other, then there's again a, a time window between them. Yeah, But that's an that's, uh, example in PHP and uh, we could do this with other languages as well, but uh, yeah. So um, let's go to the vulnerable web application, the, the, the demo. So um, I, I've implemented three attack scenarios there, all inspired by real, real examples. Um, the first one, uh, challenge one, is to withdraw money. Uh, yeah, like the code I just showed. Then uh, the challenge two, the vote must submission, like the like indication, the example from the Twitter code. And challenge three is uh, the examples I showed you from the multi-factor authentication that you try to bypass or rate limited. So uh, I also added a CVSS score uh, on, on all these challenges just to show you uh, the different impact this could have. Um, yeah. So uh, you can try it by your own also. So uh, this vulnerable web application is published on, uh, on GitHub. It's based on uh, Docker Compose, PHP, uh, MariaDB, so the latest versions. And you see on the right side there's a screenshot uh, from, from this demo application. I did not care much about HTML and design because the race condition is in the back end somewhere. It's in the PHP logic. So. Uh, not, not that much design of the vulnerable web application, but it does its, its job. So, yeah. Then the, the next one, uh, I tried to detect or prevent that race condition I just implemented in, in the demo application. Uh, yeah, you know my job title is application security specialist. I do uh, these secure SDLC stuffs, and then I tried very hard. I, I deployed everything I have, like I have uh, added a a proxy web application firewall in front of everything, deployed a runtime application self-protection, I've run static code analysis, <laughs> I did dynamic application security testing with OVASTEP. I tried everything I could, but you see on the right side, this screenshot from a commercial uh, static code analysis, I don't want to trap, uh, drop any commercial names uh, of the tools I've used, but um, yeah, you see that it detected some issues in, in my code, like a hard-coded secret, of course it's a POC uh, test, but it did not find the race condition vulnerabilities, I, and I think they were very pretty obvious, uh, and yeah, and even the vendors, the static code analysis I, I used, they claimed, to, they, they claimed to detect race condition vulnerabilities in PHP, but they didn't. So, uh, yeah, what, what can, can we do now? I, I, <laughs> but I, I think this, this results um, in the following conclusion that we, we still need penetration testing. We still need a human thinking about test cases and thinking he knows the business logic best. And um, you saw that there are a lot of ifs if you test for race conditions. Like you need like a monetizing somewhere, like, like a withdrawing. It needs to make sense to exploit it, that it becomes a real security issue. And I, I think that's only a human can do by, by doing tests and um, yeah, a, a dynamic application secu security testing tool maybe sometimes can't. And But I, I was uh, shocked that the, the SAS tooling didn't, didn't find it, so um, I, I hope that le at least that this would protect us. So let's go to the attack tool. 
and um, try to attack what we just implemented, the vulnerable uh, test cases into our code. And I, uh, before I, I do so, I want to also show you existing testing tool landscape you have. Like there are uh, common tools you can use, RC exploit, raise the web. It's raise the web, he did a, uh, the, the guy who implemented it did a very good presentation on it. Uh, raise pawn, security racer is a browser add-in. And of course, verb turbo intruder, which is also very common to test for race conditions. So uh, all these tools, tools they, they have like two types, how they, how they work. The first one is you have a uh, parallel function, uh, which means each HTTP request you send does have its own connection. And then they use one trick, not all of them, but some do this one trick, that they have the last byte of the HTTP uh, request. And then you send this a little bit delayed. And then uh, yeah, this improves um, the speed a lot because you can preload a lot, lot of requests and then send the last byte from all these requests at once and then uh, you have um, only a very small time window between each request and that's uh, why they work like this. And then you also have the pipeline function uh, where you can add multiple HTTP requests into one TCP frame. Uh, this also saves a lot of time. So like I mentioned, uh, race, exploiting race condition is all about time. You need a very small, small time window, and that's why we uh, care a lot about uh, the performance of our sending our HTTP requests. And I, I want to mention curl because I, I, I research a lot I, uh, bug bounty reports, write-ups, and everyone, some of these reports, they just chain multiple curl requests with the end operator. I mean, this does its job, but there is a way better uh, option you could use that because curl introduced in 2019 a new flag. It's called parallel or minus set. And um, this, this like sending multiple curl requests at once is very good and improves the uh, performance of your, if you request, request if you use curl. So I haven't seen this uh, anywhere. That's why I want to mention it because it's still an option to, to use curl with the parallel function. Um, yeah. So, um, but now, now I want to present you the, the, the attack tool I've developed, some improvement from the existing tool landscape. So that's my proposed tool. Uh, basically, it's a, a browser extension um, to intercept the request while you work with the application. And then you can select the request you want to attack, like um, could be any API call of your application you selected, forward it to, to the tool. Um, and uh, but it's, it does also have a uh, OWASP integration, uh, so you don't need to use the browser add-on. Uh, and it also does have a uh, API, so you could integrate it into CI/CD testing uh, if you want. Um, yeah, so it's just about selecting the, uh, the the request you want to attack, and then you forward it to the uh, to a dispatcher. So now you need a, a race inf a routine infrastructure to set it up. So I wanted to. I didn't want to run this on my local machine. I wanted to have the best performance I could get. So I wanted this to be on a data center or anywhere deployed, maybe next to my target that I want to attack because I want a very short delay on everything. And, and then was also different from the existing tools that I want to take use of multiple servers doing this, uh, multiple ser servers sending parallel requests and, and try to get these requests at, with a very short delay in between. So uh, that's... Um, yeah, what you can see here, and then uh, like this, this routine in infrastructure, this dispatcher is forwarding uh, to the other servers, and then the, the request gets sent in parallel with a sh very short delay. Yeah, that's that's the, um, the some uh, some stats here from 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 testing this out. So uh, what you see in that case, I use two race servers, two sending two servers sending parallel requests, and uh, you see there was an overlapping. So each point means one HTTP request processed on the target, and I wanted to have a very very short delay because it's all about milliseconds milliseconds here, and you see by using multiple servers you can get. A, more requests uh, processed on the very same time on, on your target. And that makes exploitation, ex successful exploitation makes it more success, uh, yeah, probability. probability. So, um, yeah, you see in, in, in average for that ca test case, it was a 1.92 milliseconds uh, between each request that uh, came to the target. I didn't use the metric 
uh, request per seconds or something. I, I wanted to see the, the real time on the target between each uh, request being processed by, because that's what's matter when you exploit the race conditions, the time on the target and not what your tool is able to send, how many requests you do. It's only the time on the, of the target. And yeah, good. Yeah, yeah let's uh, take a look into the demo, uh, how it works in action. So um, we have this vulnerable web application. We, this time I show it uh, to you with the browser add-in. And I, I start the monitoring on the browser add-in. Um, so you, you see on the left there are the challenges I've implemented, like the proof of uh, concepts. And, uh, I, I'm now trying to attack the one which is uh, doing the uh, votes. Like I, tr uh, I should be only able to uh, submit one vote for one picture, like. Uh, or one Twitter feed only once from one user ID. So there's a limitation implemented by the business logic of the application. And now I am trying to attack that, uh, co that request which is doing this, uh, which is submitting the vote. So I'm now forwarding this uh, request to my dispatcher on my race routine infrastructure. And you see there's also a list of servers. So this is the servers which are going to execute, uh, execute the actual HTTP request to the targets. Um, so now we're on a dispatcher and now we started the racing and here we see it worked. And now I go back to the application. And when I um, refresh the, the view, now I see I was able to submit multiple uh, likes from the same user ID. So I was able to bypass this, bypass this limitation, uh, submit multiple likes by one user ID. So that's the demo that worked. Let's come to the conclusion. Um, the testing of race condition needs a very good understanding of your business logic. Uh, you need to no know which places it makes sense to, to ex exploit it, to get some benefit from it. And we saw that the, the only way to, to find them really can sometimes be only a penetration test or by using a manual attack tool. Uh, we've, we've proven that secure SDLC practice do not always help. Uh, we, we still need a human to, to do this job. And and I want to spread awareness about this type of vulnerability. That's why we are having this uh, talk also, because I think uh, race condition is a very underestimated topic. Uh, it can do harm. And I think there are a lot, still a lot of applications out there vulnerable to this. Um, it's just so little known about this. Like Maita mentioned, there's a research gap. And everyone is talking about OVA's top 10 and testing for them, but uh, not, not exactly the same with um, race conditions. And also there's, um, yeah, use, you can like use the proposed uh, attack tool uh, with a distributed uh, architecture. Uh, you can find this on GitHub. So thank you very, very much. Um, if you have any questions, I am happy to take them. All right, so first question. Uh, may I know who asked the first question? Raise your hand, please. All right, please proceed to the back to receive your prize. Uh, first, how could existing tools be augmented to find race conditions? Yeah, um, yeah my tool is based on the existing tools of their knowledge. I just improved what they did by using more servers than they do. They do. Um, but they do their job, and you can use them to find race conditions. Uh, if the target server is maybe... Have, has a bigger time delay, so yeah. Okay, next. Uh, are there any web app frameworks or programming languages that are safe from race conditions from the get-go? Uh, I, I don't think, uh, I don't know uh, any because uh, you, you work with threads or, or multi-process language nearly everywhere. Uh, and uh, yeah, there are prevention techniques for every uh, programming language, yeah, so. They're I don't all know. different, right? So, yeah, yeah all different. Yeah. All right, next. What's the best way to be safe 
from rate limit attacks. Also, how can we make people realize that it is also an issue worth to be considered? Yeah, this, it depends how, how safe your rate limiting is because you, we saw some examples that a rate limit was able to bypa uh, be bypassed. Uh, so, yeah, maybe it depends on the type of rate limit that is, this is safe from, the rate limit must be safe from race conditions first. And, um, yeah, I, I try to, to uh, share awareness about this vulnerability by having this talk, so that's, I hope that we can make people aware. <laughs> yeah. All right, if there are no further questions, could we give a hand for our last presenter? Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you very much. So, we have actually come to the end. Oh, sorry, one more question? Yeah, we have the last question. All right, sure, let me hand you the mic. Okay. Now it's live, so let's try to be back in the previous uh, conference where we have live questions. Yeah. Um, so thanks you, thanks so much for the presentation. And I just would like to know if you try to make rest condition to different backends. So usually it's happening with a statement and update in some DB. So we have several technology uh, with databases and no SQL not whatever. So did you try to see if there is some of them that more robust against rest condition because they answer fastly or they answer differently or they have an auto lock or whatever. So did you make some testing or no. just yeah, yeah. try to see if uh, the backend can play a little bit about uh, yeah. avoiding rest condition? I haven't compared different technologies or backends. Uh, I just did this with the demo application, uh, which was everything by uh, default settings. So MariaDB, PHP. And, and so on, but I think there are some uh, uh, database uh, concepts out there like uh, that are atomic and, and so on. I think there are ones that might be not vulnerable, but I, I can't name them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, two more questions, actually. So, <coughs> first, uh, do you consider instrumenting the database rather than the HTTP layer to attempt to identify race conditions? Um, yeah, I, th I think uh, it's, uh, you should check it on the business logic. Uh, so more on the, um, yeah, d you can also uh, check how long your database query t uh, took time. Uh, that's because that's what's matter, uh, what does matter, and not the HTTP request timing of, uh, yeah, of the HTTP request because there could be a, a delay until it's processed on the on the target. Yeah. All right. Uh, any insight into race condition? Race conditions in binary executables. Yeah, they are there as well. <laughs> uh, I think it's often more common to, to, uh, in, also in research. I, I saw a lot of research about binary, uh, race conditions also in Linux. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, it's talk to uh, vulnerabilities, but, uh, my talk tried to, uh, focus only on the web application side of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our last call. Uh, anyone from the floor? Any other questions? If not, all right. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank uh, you. <laughs>